I got a call already. It's 8.52. Wasn't even ready to start the show. 231. Good morning. You're on at the Grow Boss. Good morning, Grow Boss. This is Mike. Mike. Um, Good morning. 
This is my first time ever growing, and I started watching your stuff about halfway through the grow. So about half of my plants are basically set up for a scrog setup, and the other half is just Christmas trees. Okay. Now, I'm literally just starting to flower this week. Should I go with a scrog setup, or do you think I should just let them do the natural thing and my nut set go from scrog? <laughs> it sounded like you said nut sack. Um, okay, so here's the thing. You got your first grow. I'll tell you something. If you got to the point where you're ready to go to flower, listen, congratulations. Most people don't get that far in their first grow. I think you're looking for too much from your first grow. So put whatever you want into flower. Enjoy yourself. Congratulations. You've had an enormous amount of success on your first grow. So in this particular case, I would say let it go. You know what I mean? It's like a first grow is like a first car. You're going to blow a clutch. You're going to smoke the brakes. You're going to run into a curb or a pole or do donuts and flatten a rim on a parking stop. You know what I mean? Like it's your first grow. Congratulations. You're doing really well. Awesome. I hear that. Um, yeah. Well, I guess that kind of answers that then. Um, then. I have one more question if you got time. Okay, what do you got for at me? What point, at what point should I start topping my plants to basically set them up for a good, strong scrog? Early. I mean, I, I know okay, that you're going to look... I say that, and it's very arbitrary, I know. But you, you got to ask yourself, when you look at people, on the, when you read what people on the internet are writing, they say things like... Uh, you top it at three branches what the f three nodes like what the fuck if you're doing a sea of green you wouldn't top it if you're doing big plants it definitely wouldn't be at the first three nodes you're probably going to go seven or ten so early and often it's tough for me to put that fine of a point on it from here like for instance okay. i would say three nodes okay so let's say you have a thousand watt plant a thousand watt light ten plant four week veg eight week flower Okay, I would say you probably top it at five nodes. But what happens if you had eight plants in the same situation? Shit, you're gonna want them a little bigger. I'd say you top it at 10 nodes. But what happens if you have 20 plants? You might top it at three nodes because plant count is directly related to veg time. The longer the veg, the bigger they get. So if you want a bigger plant, you may physically allow it to grow bigger before you top it and bush it out. That's why, um, in fact, uh, I had, so I'll tell you soon as, as hello? a, hello, check, check. Oh, I I lost it there. oh no. Okay. You got me. All right. So, yep. so I had somebody, I'm going to read you a, uh, I'm going to read you a thread I had. Um, so guy leaves up here. Okay. Oh, Mike, is it? Are you? Is this you? The Lux Meter app comment on my web, on the videos? No. I'm okay. Not so different. Your, uh, so different. TV right now. Okay. So different. Mike has left. Yep. Actually, let me let me um, open up. Hang on a sec. Let me open this up. Let me see which one I got. Because again, yeah, I've been on your chat before, but I'm not on there this morning. Okay, I don't think it's okay because I don't think it was from this morning anyway. Um, I got a uh, okay, so that's this one. Let's open up this. Give me one sec because I actually wanted to show you the uh, this thread that went by because I, I I mean it's a you know it's a ballsy thing to do. Uh, to leave like, because you know I'm going to respond to a message, right? And you know the response is going to be honest and brutal and just like anything else because, well, that's how I am. So here's right. Mike Hunt with download. So Mike Hunt's big comment. He is, he is on this. He's got this video. He's watched my video. And his big comment is download Lux Meter app. Place your phone under the canopy. You want 45,000 lux in veg, 65,000 in flower. Now you know exactly how much light you need. Problem solved. What problem? I mean, too much light? This didn't, first he didn't define any problem. Did you, did I want more? Did I want less? And 
what happens if you have an eight week veg right because we've talked about this before if you have a sea of green you have one week veg so you're going to put forty five thousand for one week and then you flower at sixty five thousand so you're literally going to increase almost fifty percent the light after one week but this guy there's no 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 forty five thousand veg sixty five thousand flowers so so and my observation is always the same thing yeah and the nutrient bottles hey mike did you have any other question for me no i'm good bud Appreciate okay all right it. thanks for the call bro so here's the guy so his my comments yep and the nutrient bottles tell you how much nutrient to use too and yet the problem still seems to exist in this case the problem being too many nutrients why because the plant changes and so do her needs just like with people there's no one right answer but it really is amazing how easy it is to grow cannabis according to mike hunt the secret is a phone and an app i wonder why 85 percent of people fail I'm not sure what your some skin means, but look, look at where it grows naturally. Jamaica, for example. Okay, so we're going to compare an indoor garden to an outdoor grow. That's what we're going to do here. And I just want to point out that if, you, if you're flowering with a blackout tarp where you can control the day and the night so you can flower other than winter, I guess you're not getting winter lux. And frankly, now that I think about it, 65,000 in flower lux now lux is the measure of the brightness so i just want to be clear that if you are flowering outdoors when the sun is at its brightest and hottest it's veg time it's spring and summer they flower into winter when it gets cooler cooler by definition means less light why because all light is heat so genius has me at 60 has more light in winter when technically they would be getting more of a red wavelength and less total light anyway so this guy's got this example so boom 200 miles per hour of course it's the right answer because that's how fast nascar goes around the track so everybody should be driving 200 miles an hour so they get a continuous lux of 65,000 plus daily can't possibly be lux changes with season for some reason, I keep telling people too much right, but I don't provide any solution other than to move the light away. That's because not all lights are dimmable. You buy an LED that's not dimmable, how the fuck are you gonna reduce the light? Put duct tape over the lights, right? You see what I'm saying? So, and actually there is no other solution than move the light further away. The right answer is to measure it and move the light and or decrease the watts accordingly. Of course. I keep telling you, the right amount of light is the right amount of light. And anything more will just kill your plants and anything less will get you less yield. But the right amount of nutrients is the right amount of nutrients and anything more won't get you more. And anything less is, you know what I'm saying? So in all cases, the correct amount is the correct amount. People who are experiencing problems is mainly due to too many nutrients and overwatering, etc. Okay. 951 hang on a sec for me okay so here this guy clearly tells me that an app and his phone will solve the problem and yet here there are two more problems that he's just included which is nutrients and overwatering. but in a healthy garden the right amount of light is appropriate too too is appropriate too little plants will too little the plants will stretch and you won't get the yield too much you will get you will light burn them but you have already caused the issue by telling people to move the light away so their, stri stri their shit stretches to fuck early on. Okay. Listen, there's a lot of things you can say, but I I'll tell you, if your plant were to stretch, you would still be able to finish. You would just get less and you wouldn't get as efficient a crop. However, I just want to point out that I don't teach, for the most part, I don't even teach you how to grow. I just explain, one, how not to fail, and two, how to use the equipment that's in a hydro store. Because what are we really talking about here? Most everybody fails because they kill their shit because they got the wrong equipment, they're using it the wrong way, they, they've spent five times as much because they're venting their AC because they got the glass in the hoods. Dude, you address this one issue like you're a fucking genius. Oh, you just make this statement, blah. And yet... It's all relative, isn't it? At a 1,000 HPS will typically give 6,000 lux at three feet away. 
from the canopy giving a 4x4 spread using a magnum hood. I wonder where he gets that information from because there is no... They don't tell you the hood size when they when they test their lights, but I'll tell you, they do it on like a little footprint thing. So they have a very small, very focused hood. So if you know something about a Magnum, you must be testing your own light. And frankly, one data point is not something I would trust. That will yield you around 30 to 35 ounces dry in a four by four. 35 ounces, 16 ounces in a pound. I'm telling you, you're going to get about a pound dry in a 4x4. Four four. This guy has you beyond two pounds. I am way off the mark because I don't know how to use the equipment pro appropriately, particularly due to my arrogance. Listen, a guy who makes a statement that says, that makes this statement that says, problem solved. I mean, what... What arrogance is that? It's tough to accuse me of being arrogant when you wave your hand with an app and say, there's no skill involved. Download an app. You say 85% of growers fail. It's no wonder they aren't following specific rules and guessing things like you suggest in your videos. Or maybe people that go into your store have the arrogance you do. Indoor growing is a science. And any good grower will try to replicate outdoor settings as much as possible. For some reason, you educate against this rule by telling people to give their plants half the required light. I've never said half the required light. I just said this. If you kill your shit with too much light, it takes a month to recover. All right. Hey, 312, what can I do for you? Oh, wait. 312 is not the call. Hey, girl 951. boss. Not, good morning, 951. What can I do for you? Hey, how's it going, man? Um, I just have two two quick questions. Okay. Um, my first question is, I have a four foot, oh my bad, yeah, a four foot eight bulb T5 light, I'm vegging with it, and I'm going from 200 watts to 400 watts, but I'm trying to figure out how far away should the light be from the top of the canopy when I put it to 400 watts. It seems, I've done it, I did it this week and I seem like I was kind of burning it. I'm about two feet away. I'm not sure if I should go a little bit higher or not. Um, that's just my first question. Okay. Uh, my my second question, my second question. I have some other plants in uh, transition. It's the first week of transition, um, and I just I'm just wondering if I should still be tucking the 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 plants in the trellis net. Oh yeah, you'll be you'll until be, they're you'll done be doing transitioning. The, you'll be doing the trellis net for a while, like maybe a couple of weeks. You might end up pinching and topping a little more too, but. You, you brought up a couple okay. of interesting points here. So you have a 200 watt veg and a 400 watt flower? No, no, no. I, I have a 400 watt veg and a 600 watt flower. Okay. So you said that you had some plants in flower already, and then you added more plants to the flower garden? No, no. I have two separate, two separate setups. One is my veg. I'm currently at 200 watts. I'm trying to ramp it up to 400, but I'm just trying to see how far away should my T5 light be when I okay. do ramp up to 400. Okay. Um, in my flower, said, I have 600. Yeah. But you also said you had plants and flower. Tell me about that again. In my plants and flower, um, I have I have them under 400 watts right now in transitioning. Um, it's barely the first the first week just ended, um, but I'm trying to. See if I should still be touching them, even though I'm already transitioning and I'm starting to see. I'm, I don't have any bud sites yet, but I'm definitely seeing all the little hairs coming out. Oh yeah. I'm just wondering if I should still be tucking. Yeah, you'll totally keep tucking it into the trellis because you want it to stay even the whole way. As for the first part, okay, okay. As for the first part, let's think about it like gears. So you've got a 400 watt veg light T5, four foot eight bulb. Four bulbs are on at the moment. How far away are the four bulbs? Right now, I would say they're about between a foot and a half to two feet away. Okay, so four bulbs at two feet is eight bulbs at four feet. So there's this little, there's the, I usually describe this as like the, uh, the tire chirp, right? See, you can go from 200 to 300. So what your plants are exactly the same. You up it to 300, you back the light away a little. 
you can go up to 400, back the light away a little more. Because that's what you have. You have a four bulb and an eight bulb. So it's like revving second gear out to 4,900 before you shift, you'll get that tire chirp into third. So you always want to veg them too big. How many plants do you have under the 200 watt light? I have eight. How long have they been vegging for? They've been vegging for two weeks. I would probably say, as and again, it's as close as I can get you without you taking pictures, making notes in like the 20 week, in like the 20 week tracker or something. Making notes in like the 20 week tracker take a couple of pictures and I can't get you any closer than all the lights at four feet. Is three feet the right answer? Maybe, but if three and a half feet is the right answer and you do three feet, you will slow your plants down. You see what I'm saying? Like you'll, you'll be in the too much light range. So as, yeah, clo yeah. as close as I can get you would be four bulbs. If you're at four, if you're at four bulbs at two feet, you'll do eight bulbs at four feet. And the plants are going to grow into the space. And you might be able to do eight bulbs at three feet. But again, I mean, the best thing that I can do to show you is open up this picture and just remind you guys that this is, you'll get the picture in a sec. All right. All right, listen. Hey, thanks for the call. Okay, so three, two. I, I missed one from uh, three, 312 or something. Give me a call back. Okay, this is a six-bulb T5. It grew five plants this big. If you remember, we've talked about this before, you will be stripping them down until it's just this part right in here that just this part right in here, that'll be left, right? You're going to pinch the top. You'll strip the bottom. Hey, great, Nate. Five books for $40 is only for the show. You don't get that from the website. <laughs> All right. Um, so this is week four veg with five plants. And if you remember, this is what they look like the week before. That's week one, two, and three. And this is with a little bit of notes. So I just want to point out 642, good morning. 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 Hello. Yes. How are you? Hey, it's a Kiwi from down under here, all the way from New Zealand. Hey, I'll go thank you for a lot of things, mate. Sweet, We thank had a you. bad economy down here. And um, for the last year and a half, you've saved our farm, I tell you that, mate. So um, I've been growing flat out and keeping the farm alive. <laughs> Nice. So there you go. Um, yeah, no, thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, I've got a couple of Kiwi bloody suggestions for you. You know how everyone is confused about light. Why don't you just make a rule that all the sugar leaves have to point towards the light? If they start dropping too much light, their lives always have to point to the light. You know what I mean? They always got to point up. As soon as the leaves start dropping down, what do you do? You move it away. It's a, it's a good little idea. What do you think? Okay, that's pretty good. I will say that you can get drooping leaves from not enough nitrogen a little and silica. So there's generally two problems with drooping leaves. This is when we're talking about in the morning, they're standing up, they're bright-eyed, they're bushy-tailed, they're ready to start growing. But as the day goes by, they hump down like this a little. Um, usually what I suggest is make a T. That's one good solution for that. And back the light up because they have too much light. You're tiring them out before the end of the day. So I, I like I like those. And that is in the book, by the way. Both those comments are in the book. So I do like that. But you also have to remember that it's a very narrow window where the leaves droop before they start burning. Because think about it. If they droop in the last two hours of the day, any more than that, and then they're going to start burning. So it's a very narrow window what you're discussing. But I like it. What other Kiwi ideas do you have for me? Oh, 
I, I tell you, I, what the trick is, is when you do that, you've got to do it from veg. When I see things, you've got to actually start knowing your own lights and systems. So you lift them as you go. I've been doing this thanks to you for a couple of years now, but that's how I do it. The other Kiwi trick I've got now, when you do your thinning out and all that, when the flowers are, you know, I always do it around 25, day 25. You have all the big water leaves only take off the centre four or three, but it depends how big they are. Because if you take off more than that, she'll grow another one. So don't take the whole leaf off. Just take off three or four of the leaves inside the big five leaf. The family. fingers, the fingers. And she take, the fingers, take yeah, off the fingers, a couple of fingers. Right. And it's a, it's a bit more time, but she won't generate any more. So there you go. There's two tricks from down under for you, Grow Boss. And I thank you very much. All right? I, dude, I totally appreciate the tips. Thank you so much. And thanks for calling because oh, it's probably what? today or tomorrow yeah. or something, oh, more, right? Oh, it's four o'clock in the morning here, mate. Oh, oh yeah. It's alarm. yesterday. Or... To go. Yeah, yeah, I'm already here to you. That's why us Kiwis are so much smarter than you, buggers, eh? We didn't vote for Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen, I appreciate the call. I got another one coming. Thanks from Down Under. 503, you're on with the Grow Boss. 503, good morning. Hey, what's up? How's it going? Good morning. So I just had a watering question for you. I have uh, four giant outdoor plants in 250-gallon uh, like wooden boxes that I made um, and I water them every two days with I don't know, about 20 gallons of water maybe uh, and I've had people tell me every that I should water them every day and I've had people tell me I should water them every three to four days so I was just trying to get a more experienced point of view as to how frequently to water them okay First off, they're about uh, first off, four feet, four first, feet wide. Okay. How tall? Uh, probably about the same height, four feet tall. Okay. I'm doing wanna, a lot of topping. I want to know what it takes to build a 250 gallon container. How did you build a 200? What did you make it out of? I just used OSB flooring and uh, cut it into sections and then used uh, four by four posts and mistakenly locked those into uh, pieces and, and secured them all together and then added more four by four posts later around the edges to create uh, uh, posts to put caging around to uh, hold the plants as the season goes. Um, how the sides how long were the sides uh four feet by four feet four feet by four feet four feet tall i was just wondering what it takes to make 250 gallons okay i'm gonna how many plants do you have outside four okay my observation is this i would water them until they need to be until they're wet and then i wouldn't water them again until they need to be watered one it's a plant you're not going to gain anything by watering more um two i'm trying to get you to do less work not more like mm -hmm. like you watch like i have this series of videos where i show you like the bushmaster this is the bushmaster doing chores um and I show you in the videos, I show you him watering as well. And what it takes to actually water, like, like we go over watering and stuff too. And I, I'm just going to mm -hmm. tell you that the, the problem doesn't come from the frequency of watering or anything like that. The, the real problem seems to come from if you get in the zone where you didn't water frequently enough. Or you were busy doing something else and they uh -huh. drooped and you dehydrated the roots. Uh, what I'm more concerned about is there's this black and white range. Oh, you should be watering all the time. And you should be waiting until they droop. These are the two extreme ends. I'm just suggesting that if you narrow your scope and you live in the gray area, which is a tough thing for growers to do. 
If you can manage to live in the gray area, that's the best thing. So what are we talking about? We'll ex exclude the two extreme ends, watering every day and waiting till the leaves drop. How about if we come up with a general sentence that says, you water until it's wet, you leave them alone until they need to be watered. Don't be too extreme on how often you water. Don't be too extreme on how long you wait. And, and I'll tell you, you see what I'm saying about that? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've never gotten it to the point where I've let the leaves droop and I mean, it's it's really really good soil. It holds it holds the water well. It drains it well, and uh, I've I've never had any problems with them. I just I've always gotten different answers all over the board, and have been trying to find a more experienced answer or a smarter answer that made more logical sense. Okay, so you know you know we talk about watering and what water does, and when we when we remove the nutrients from the water. What are we really talking about here? A plant is called a plant works on capillary action the same way. All right, thanks for the call. The same way if uh, five five one three. Hang on one sec. So pa plants work on capillary action the same way. If you were to take a paper towel, dip one corner in a cup of water, it would run the water all the way up paper towel. It soak the entire paper towel. So how does water get up? It goes from one cell to the next cell to the next cell. If you have too much salt in the media or you have too much water in the media, that changes the osmotic pressure about the frequency of watering and how wet things stay. That's why worms come out of the ground when it rains. They drown. There's no oxygen. They suffocate. So what we're really talking about here is capillary action. In the capillary action, what we're talking about is the same thing as the lymphatic system in a human. There's your blood system, right? Your vascular system, and then there's your lymphatic. And as the blood goes through the arterioles and it goes through the veins and it goes into the capillaries, it's spread into one cell thin. It releases gas, it takes on other products. It, it, you know what I mean? It's part of the metabolic waste process. But the lymph fluid meets the blood on the other side and washes the things away. It goes back into our lymph nodes and our lymph system. So there's two things happening, right? One is the transportation of nutrients, and the other is the cleansing and the fluid that moves through your body. That's why they tell you to drink lots of fluid when you're sick. It leaves your bloodstream, it goes through your cells in your body, gets caught up by the lymph, right? Okay, and gets filtered out. So that's what we're talking about here. So when we talk about in terms of watering, what does water do for the plant? The plant maintains its turgor. That's why, like, on elderly people, if you pinch their skin like this, it tents. It stays up. It doesn't fall back down into the shape of your hands. And that's part of dehydration because generally they don't drink enough. So when we talk about a plant not drinking enough, that's what we're talking about is it starts to lose its turgor and falls over. Now, the roots also dehydrate at that point. It doesn't do things good if you concentrate what's in the plant. The metabolic waste processes, things stop happening when the water stops flowing through the plant. Now, remember what's happening. The water goes up the plant, cell by cell, taking stuff with it. Old stuff comes up to the leaf. And what happens at the leaf? The plant releases water in the form of sap or in the form of sweat. Water to a plant coming out of the leaf is a metabolic waste product, just like oxygen is a metabolic waste product of the plant. It's part of the process of creating sugar from light water CO2. So all we're talking about is metabolic process and the flow that water has in the same thing. Whether it be transporting CO2 back to our lungs and we release oxygen, or whether it's taking the oxygen and the alveoli, bring it into our vascular system through the lungs, only to be pumped back out, arterial, you know, the vascular into the capillary back through our cells. The plants do it the exact same way, only they do it in reverse because they release O2 and we breathe and we release CO2. But they're part of the same process. It's just one thing in a chain where this part of the process is plant, this part of the process is human, there's a sun and an atmosphere. So what I'm suggesting is when we look at water, what do you think the benefit is going to be from watering more frequently? Is the plant going to suck up more water? That's not how this works. If it was how this works, why do companies that produce rock wool like this say, Oh my God, we've got the most perfect air to water ratio at 23%. You can't get a better air to water ratio than if you're using, right? Okay. However, that's an air to water ratio 
if it's not submerged and has had some time to drain. So even if you take those things up, rock wool, if you water it too frequently, you're going to submerge the roots, rot the root hairs, and eventually they won't be able to absorb the nutrients no matter what. So what I'm suggesting is when everybody talks about frequency of water, remember this is a house plant. There's nothing you can do to speed it up. <sighs> Much, maybe there is. Maybe there's like a couple things you can do. But your plant has to be healthy. You can't have a sick, shitty plant. Because I was telling you yesterday, you can literally take Clonex or a Turbo Cloner. You saw that Bushmaster video and you can put that shit right in there and you got a sick, shitty plant. You saw how good Turbo Cloner works? Oh, I forgot I had a caller on. 513, what can I do for you? Yeah, I was uh, getting ready to set back, uh, set up uh, another... Um, grow. I haven't done it in about a year, but I did it for years. And I was looking at buying um, a different ballast because the last ballast I used were eye power and they were awful, uh, like a fire hazard almost. Um, and I'm looking at three different kinds right now. Uh, and you may be able to throw an additional, you know, kind in there. But I was looking at the, the 1,000 watt ballast, either a Solus Tech, a Phantom 2, or a Galaxy Grey Lamp. And I was just wanting to get your input on, you know, kind of which product you liked um, more. I know each of them have their own little um, nice things about them as far as, like, with the Galaxy, you can use different bulbs. Um, I know you can select the, the wattage on the other two. And I didn't know, is it better to have a 600 while you're running 600, or is it okay to use a dimmable? Um, you know, what are your thoughts on that? Or, you know, which ballast. <laughs> okay, give me one sec. Okay, I got to tell you, in the history of working hydroponics, a decade in a hydro store, um, 312, I'll get you in a minute. In the history of working a hydro store, about two months ago, some guy comes into the store and he wants to buy all the used ballasts, but he wants to turn them all on first because he wants to make sure that they're all the right brightness. Now, I have never heard that before. I, people want to make sure they work. The bulb wasn't warm, so I'm really not sure what he was testing. But I will tell you, some of those ballasts fired the bulb better than others. And I was very, very surprised at that. So, <clears throat> I just bought this Solar... I bought three 600 Solar Techs used. I've been... I've got them... Actually, I think I bought four. We got three left. I've been selling these things for a hundred bucks with the power cord. I gotta tell you, Solatex, Solus Tech ballasts, they are super nice. I am never afraid to buy a Solus Tech ballast used, okay? I mean, I buy them cheap because I buy them, you know, a lot of the time. So I like Solus Tech. Um, I've okay. got Nanolux. I just literally bought four of these things new in the box, you know, used because I didn't get them from the distributor, but new in the box. Yeah, these things are a hundred bucks each. I've been selling them a hundred bucks yeah. each. They're way more expensive online. Okay, now you had also <laughs> asked about a Galaxy. Now this is a sunlight supply product and you asked about Phantom, which is Hydro Farm. Those Phantoms are really nice. In fact, I think Phantom is one of the few ballasts that actually fire the bulb at the correct wattage for the first 15 minutes and then dim it to what you've set it. So you put a 600 and a 600 watt ballast, you've got to turn down to 400. It fires the bulb at the correct wattage, then dims it down after that. Now, Phantoms are super nice. I have the Galaxy. They have DEs, single ends. They've got a lot of different versions of these. Now, this yeah. is Sunlight. Hydro Farm is, is Phantom. Uh, Solus Tech makes a good one. Nanotech makes a good ballast. These are like part of a hive. You can program them together. So these are pretty good ballasts, but you're looking at, you know, 200 bucks a ballast or something like that. Or, you yeah. know, realistically, you could, buy a, you, you could buy a new ballast, not UL certified for half that. 
So you said you were worried about a fire. Yeah. So listen, the last thing you need is a negligent homicide charge because you burnt your shit to the ground. So spend the extra <laughs> exactly, hundred bucks. Yeah. yeah, totally. Dude, electrical will fuck you up and your neighbors. Have you standing outside? I'm a oh, paramedic. Yeah. It'll have you standing outside at two in the morning in your blanket going, I should have bought a new six plug outlet, right? So <laughs> yeah. it's brutal. Um, anyway. Spend the yeah. extra money. Not only are you going to get like a 9 or 10% brighter bulb than the no-name, you'll sleep better at night because these things are a lot of electricity. Um, yeah, yeah. I want to be able to leave the house and not worry that I'm coming back to a fire. <laughs> you know? So for you, you're on track with uh, buy a name brand ballast. Now, I'm not opposed to you buying used. So if you know yeah, what you Yeah, I've bought used before. Yeah, if you know what you want, <clears throat> is a Phantom better than a Galaxy, better than a Solus Tech? Is one high-quality ballast better than another high-quality ballast? I don't know. I'm not that smart. Are high-quality ballasts <laughs> better than low-quality ballasts? Absolutely. Remember the Yugo? So I'm just saying that... What's that? that oh, remember the Yugo car. I'm just saying that... There are high quality things and low quality things. And if you want high quality, you're going to spend more than a low quality thing. And if you're prepared for that, brilliant. You got, you know, listen, for the cost of the project, even if you had 10 ballasts, $1,000 on the cost of the project is nothing. Because if you had 10 ballasts, you're going to have to cool them. So the cost of the AC will more than make it up. Gotcha. Um, I had one more question okay. also. Um, I've seen a lot of stuff online saying that uh, high pressure sodium is better than metal halide. And I know the, the old knowledge of, of things from years back um, was that you use metal halide in veg, but I'm seeing opposite of that online where people are saying metal, or that high pressure sodium is better for veg. What's your take on that? Okay, so when you say better, um, define something for me. What means, what better means? What does better mean? Uh, um, you know, quicker growing, bushier growing, you know, um, healthier, a healthier thing, you know, the, the, I don't want to say quicker, but yeah, a more, a more healthy, fuller plant, you know, something that's not going to be stretching as much. Okay. Um, so you, you know, said bushier. that has to do with genetics, but. So you said bushier and stretching. And that's what I've heard about it too. The difference between an MH and an HPS not only is seasonal, but it's also that you get a shorter plant. A shorter plant is bushier. Okay, so let me ask you this. You're a good grower. You know how to, you know, let's say you're a good grower. You know how to grow. Um, again, you look at this picture here and you go bushier than that. Um, because you said faster and then you walked that back and you said healthier and then you walked that back as well. And I just want to say <laughs> yeah, that yeah. what it seemed to be that you focused on was one data point and that statistic was bushier, closer nodes. Okay. So let me ask you, you take yeah. this plant right here and you do, you top it. Like I always talk about, you strip the bottom and you bush this out. I don't know how much more than that. Look how good that plant looks. So you tell me, if an yeah. HPS, which is hotter, I'm just by nature of not only the gas, but the color of the spectrum, if the HPS is hotter, is, I mean, look at that, that's end of week four. I don't know how much more growth you expect. Now, when we talk about bushier, yeah. we can also talk about something like, uh, let's talk about like a paclobutrazole one of the PGRs, a plant growth regulator that stops cell elongation. That will make your plant bushier too. Topping will make your plant yeah, bushier. Sometimes too bushy. <laughs> so what we're talking about here is grower talent. Listen, there are so many growers talk about, growers talk about this shit like, like it's baseball statistics. Like we talked earlier, yeah. here's a guy with 45 <laughs> to 65,000 lux. Problem solved. Everybody can go home. I can end the show. And yet, and yet there are so many other problems. I don't understand how that solves a bug problem. 
I don't understand how that solves all the other things that happen that go through the store. I don't see how that solves too many nutrients. So here's a guy who says, I know this one thing and that'll fix everything. He's discovered something. What I'm saying is, it's a ratio. RPMs in your vehicle is a ratio of what you're doing and about to do that you're going to factor in four seconds from now. So you've got this veg, this grow, this all this stuff going on. And so I, I don't know how anybody can give you a specific number anywhere. All I can sort of do is educate you and help you get in the zone of success quicker. All right. Did I answer your question? Yeah. Uh, kind of, yeah. So which one do you prefer yourself? High pressure sodium or, or metal halide for a bench? What is your preference? Oh, I, I'll tell you, if I can get away with it, I flower with a grow bulb because it's so much cooler. How's that for an answer? I flower with a grow bulb. Because again, <laughs> if, I I put, <laughs> if I put two buds in front of you, you would not be able to tell me indoor from outdoor, hydro from soil, MH from LED, from CMH, from single end. It's all the same. Now, is there a yeah. slight difference between them? Hell yeah. Basic cigarettes are gross. If, I'm, if I go out drinking, I'm going to smoke a Marlboro. Well, not anymore. I'd smoke a Marlboro or a Camel. <laughs> but I wouldn't smoke a Benson and Hedges. So is yeah. there a difference in the final product? Yes. Are they all nicotine? In terms of tobacco, yes. Is there a difference? Yes. Is it, what is the value of that difference? For instance, for me, the value is I would never, I'm not a smoker, but I would never smoke like the awful brands. So I'm just saying that at some point, all right, listen, I got another call. Let me take this call. Thanks. 312, 312, good morning. How you doing, Global Boat? Good morning. Oh, 770. Yeah. I'll, get, I'll try to get to you next. 312. What can I do for you? No, I had a, a question for you. I'm watching the show live, and I see how you answer the question about uh, how much space you need to use for your life. Uh, I, got a, I got something going on right now, and I have uh, 4,000 watts, uh, and I have a a 12 by 11 space with nine foot ceiling and i plan on flowering an 18 gallon pot am i doing too much or and i plan on vegging out for about eight eight weeks i just wanted to know like am i doing it correctly okay um i i I, you're coming. It's a little low to hear you. So let me ask. You said you had an 11 by what room? Oh, 11, 11 by 12 okay. by nine with nine foot film. Okay. And you have 4,000 watts. What size bucket are you in right now? Yes, sir. Uh, right now, I'm still currently, I'm in veg right now. I've been vegging in the solo cup for about a good, a good, month you uh, yeah a good four weeks and i'm finna raise a transplant them like tomorrow or like yesterday i know yeah 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 or like yesterday <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Just got some roots. I just have like i just got one plant that just recently the roots started coming i just started seeing at the bottom so that's why i say i was waiting until i seen a little root to start coming out the bottom of the cup before I transplanted it just to make sure that the roots were good and Wait, planted. Let me ask you, did you start these from seed? Yes, sir. Okay, so they're four weeks old from seed. What I would first like to do is I'd like to point out that don't use the word veg. You're not vegging yet. You're going to start. Right now what you okay. have is a seedling. And in your head, I just want you to understand that a seedling is not in the veg stage because you had said you've been vegging for four weeks and i just want you to change okay, yeah, you right. I, I want you to just i want you to understand that what you said was that you're actively growing the plants you're not it's not the same mm. thing as starting a seed so you've had seedlings in red because i was thinking i was thinking you were vegging in red cups for four weeks and that you would have a plant that looks like that looks like these plants and you would that's not that's not accurate so you're going to go you into, right, you right. I was... how many plants do you have 
uh, right now I have seedling under my T5 light. I got 28. Just you know, that I just did over more than what I needed. I'm not going to use all 28. Oh right? yeah, you you probably will actually. You'll probably wish you had 40. Okay. You have 28 starts in red cups, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So what I'm going to, um, I guess how I'm going to offer you this is you're going to take 28 of these plants. You're going to put them in a one gallon cup. You are going to keep them under that four foot eight bulb T5 for another week after they go into the red, after they go into a one gallon cup. Then you are going to put them all, all of them, under one 1,000 watt light. That 1,000, one 1,000 watt light. That 1,000 watt light will be all the way at the ceiling. And you will veg them there for four weeks. At the end of four weeks, you're going to have a decision to make. One of the decisions that you're going to have to make is, are you going to veg them longer or are you going to start flowering? If you veg them longer, you're going to have to top super crop them, lollipop them, and put them into a three gallon bucket for more veg. If you decide to flower them, you're going to put them in a five gallon bucket and start flowering. See, the thing is you have four lights and 28 plants. At the end of four weeks worth of veg, that's seven plants per light. You're probably going to want a six week veg, but in no way, are you ever going to get to an 18 gallon with this system? You'll never get beyond a 10. Okay. Even if you had an eight week veg, you would veg for the first four weeks in a one, you'd veg for the next four weeks in a three, and then you would go to a 10 for flower. You would never be able to get to an 18. See what I'm saying? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, listen, I appreciate the call and let me, uh, let me, this guy, hang on, give me one sec here. Okay. <clears throat> All right, I'll be right back. Okay, that's what I mean about watering. See, like right now, the Bushmaster has a, a an eight week. It's actually a ten week veg as you watch this series, and I'm gonna post this up. Bushmaster. So I show you guys the time frame of the veg from from ones to threes and how it progresses in in that garden all right let's see we had a couple okay let's see i had ah oh, i lost that guy's comments so we were talking i just I... okay so my observation back to this guy was uh now there's a couple more phone calls but i was working on oh there it is 770, good morning. Hey, uh, one second, I guess there's a delay here. Okay, so uh, I have a quick question about uh, deficiencies and, and how often to, I guess, either water or, or add the uh, deficient mineral, sorry, spell, uh, deficient mineral. And uh, so, long story short, I had a magnesium deficiency. And so, on the watering day, I added probably uh, a, a teaspoon of. Uh, magnesium sulfate 
And I'm just wondering either how long should I go for that for waterings, or should I just do it once and then see if it fixes it, or is there like a, a double amount that you use to correct the deficiency? <clears throat> okay, so let me ask you this, because you said teaspoon and you said mag sulfate. Both of those things lead me to believe that you used Epsom salt. Yes. Okay. Uh, the, the, the reason being that I, I had actually tried... Oh, go ahead. Go, no, tell me. Okay, so, so the, the reason I, I use uh, Epsom salt was because I, I do have uh, Cali Magic and CAMG Plus, and those are low in magnesium, and I was adding those at like double the recommended dosage, and I still was seeing the deficiency increase. So I figured the only way was to use something a little bit more concentrated in magnesium, since I didn't need calcium at that point for sure. Okay, so I'll tell you something about the products that you mentioned. Cali Magic, it seems to have a similar mag to to uh, CalMag. However, there's so much more C that it shrinks the relationship of mag, so concentration goes down. Now, you look at a sweet product, that's mag sulfur. Okay, there is three times the mag in mag sulfur than there is in CalMag. Also, the plants are bigger toward the end of flower. They want more mag. They want that sulfur as they're finishing. So it was a, it was a, it was excellent reasoning that you came up with in terms of how to add more mag. I always caution people on using a any kind of powder, whether it be a mag salt or a nitrogen salt or a powdered nutrient, whatever it is. I always caution people on salts because salts are so much more powerful than liquids. I mean, salts are can be a hundred times stronger than liquids. Right. So it's really easy to oversalt something. Now, here's the other thing I'd like to point out. You're in a situation where the normal solution isn't working. So there's one of two things can happen. And listen, I'm a, I'm a diagnostic specialist. I don't care if it's people, computers, cars, growing dope, don't care. There's always two components to a problem. One is, once you get past that limit of a normal amount of addition, you have to ask yourself, is it really the mag that's the problem? Because what I hear is too much light. So, uh, I guess I should describe the problem. Obviously, you don't have a picture. So, uh, it's all the lower growth, and the newer growth is completely fine. So, my understanding was that magnesium is a uh, fairly like mobile uh, nutrient or something like that. So, I've added nitrogen to it. I've added the regular regimen of NPK and stuff like that. So, it, it's only the lower growth that is the reason why. And I, and I was looking at your video for deficiencies, and it was the, the veins were so green. It was yellowing on the sides. I, I originally thought it was nitrogen, and I added too much, and I got a little bit of the uh, curling at the end. Um, okay, so, so while you're I, having, I really couldn't. Okay, yeah. so while you're having one problem, you've decided to fix another problem, and um, I'm always afraid I'm going to lose the mic. Okay. So while having one problem, you've decided to fix another problem. Without isolating the one problem, you then determine that your conclusion, however, was isolated to one condition, even though there are multiple factors that you have to contend with. What I'm suggesting is, is that I don't believe that you can jump to the conclusions that you're going to. Also, MAG is a mobile ion. It's true. However, that doesn't mean you're going to be able to repair the bottom. The repair where, okay, so you're saying that, we're saying that the lower leaves sacrifice the magnesium for the upper leaves so they can convert light. So we know that you have too much light because the bottom's sacrificing the top. This is of course provided that your roots are healthy. Okay, so we know that you have too much light because the bottom is sacrificing itself for the top. So in, what you've decided to do is, you've decided to race ahead and add more. You didn't slow things down because I also in the book tell you if you have a problem, you got to slow the grow. There's nothing you can do. Open up a window, raise the light, slow it down. Nowhere in your solution did you mention, you know, the original problem did you mention the nitrogen, nor did you mention slowing your garden down. What you've done is you piled one problem on top of another problem, tried to solve one problem by reducing the nitrogen. And mind you, it was an enormous amount of nitrogen if you folded the tips, like miracle grow nitrogen. Then you've decided that well, the... Uh, uh, just one thing, I, I have been uh, using the 
a, a quarter of the dosage recommended. Yeah, but day. but that's like saying I'm at 1500 RPM. It doesn't tell me what gear. And even if you told me sixth gear at 1500, so you we know that you're doing 60. We don't know is that you're in a schoolyard and should be doing 10. All I'm suggesting is there are you toss out one factor, but you don't give us any of the other information. So what you're missing is the relationship between the detail that you're saying and all the details that surround it in the decision that you're looking for. And what I'm suggesting is <clears throat> that it is improper to judge somebody's lung capacity under normal circumstances while they're having an asthma attack. And what you've tried to do is you've tried to treat two concurrent, they're happening at the same time, problems as two isolated events. And while you fuck the plant up with too much nitrogen, then you run into this mag problem. The mag problem, by definition, is too much light. Because if you decrease the light, you would use less mag. Then, when the mag at the bottom sacrificed itself for the top, you're trying to fix the bottom while you still have too much light. How do I know you have too much light? Because the mag at the bottom sacrificed itself for the top. And that means that there's too much light at the top. If the plant continues to grow taller, it's only going to get closer to the light. That's why I tell you guys specifically, um, specifically in this picture right here, in this picture right here, that if you put your plant up against 100 if you put your plant up against 100% light, where can it grow? You must live in the zone from 70 to 90% light. You can't do 100%. And since you don't know where 90% is, you're living in the 65 to 85% zone just to keep that margin of error. See what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I had no idea that the uh, too much light could cause uh, at least what looks like a mag deficiency or, or mag deficiency in the first place. Okay, uh, so that is mag, one of my is, problems, uh, mag is much light. mag is the central molecule in the chlorophyll ion, and it gets used up in the process of converting light into sugar, and so that's the relationship. And so you you people and and generally soon as and this is why I tell you guys. All right, listen, thanks for the call. I got a couple going on here. Hey, nine seven zero, hang on one sec for me. That's why I tell you guys. Hello. That, 970, hang on one sec. That's why I tell you guys MAG is the number one problem yeah, yeah, in a I healthy garden. No hey, turn down your radio for me. 970, oh. turn down your computer or phone. So that's why I tell you guys that the number one problem in a healthy garden is not enough MAG because a healthy garden is converting light into sugar at the fastest rate possible without going above what's possible and damaging your plant. All right. 970, good morning. What can I do for you? Good morning, Jason. Um, we've talked uh, online a couple of times already. Um, I'm going to be taking a 26-hour bus ride in a few weeks to get your books. Uh, I live on an island down here in Mexico, and I'm having a problem with equipment, acquiring things. Can I give you an, a, a short list of, of the tents and lights that I have? Could you tell me if this is feasible? Yes, please. Tell me what you're thinking. All right, I've got two, I got two 48 inch by 32 by 60 inch grow tents. Okay. I got, I have, <laughs> I have a 650 watt HPS MH light generic, air cooled. <clears throat> um, I'm sorry. Uh, you have a ballast that's air cooled or a hood? Right, um, it's a, a, a minimal hood. It's basically just two pieces of aluminum that fold over the unit. Okay, so you have a hood. Is it physically attached to the ballast? Yes. Okay. All right. I know what you got. Go on. I've got two 1,000 watt LEDs. Um, Gianor. G I A N O R. Okay. It doesn't matter. All right. Go on. All right. And I got a 600 watt. And I have a 600 watt LED. Okay. 
So the question is... And a shitload of CFLs. Okay, so I'll tell you, the question is, you have a 2x4 tent. So, a 2x4 tent will get you a half pound every 90 days. Is that enough for you? Yes, sir. Okay, then throw away all the lights, because if you use any of those lights, you'll have to start with a 5x5 tent. So, you have a tent... Uh all right you have a tent that's meant for a moped and you have lights that are high-end super performance lights your requirements are such that if you want one half pound every 90 days this equals 400 watts and you start from seed so if you if you're going to want the only alternative to, to this is a 200 watt veg if you're going to start from clone. But if you're going to start from seed, let's just say you do auto flowers, you would buy yourself yes, a, I am. one four foot eight bulb T5. You'd hang it in a closet. You would this tent. You would use that tent. Now, if you want to use any of these lights, you're going to have to start buying five by five tents. Because all of these lights will not, none of these lights will fit in this tent. So, you have a first gear tent and all of your lights are sixth gear. So you tell me, how do you get from first to sixth gear with no second, third, fourth, or fifth? Right. That's what I was afraid of. Right. I appreciate your help. You know, you're 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 the man. You're you're the you're the doctor of dank. You're the uh, <laughs> the shawl of uh, of sativa. You're the man. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hey, listen. Have a safe trip. I know who this is, um, dude. The pictures were fantastic. I just wanted to say thanks so much. All right. Listen, this is why I tell you guys. I mean, someone. This guy here writes a comment where all you got to do is buy a lux meter. The fuck a lux meter is going to tell you that you either need bigger tents or smaller lights. That's why when you finish reading this comments, this guy's like, he ends up saying, listen, he's totally right. And that overwatering and too much light. I mean, he ends up saying, he ends up agreeing with me without saying that he agrees with me. And I'll tell you, you know why? Because three times a week, there's somebody on one of these videos who's just absolutely smarter than me. And they're going to tell me and everyone else how smart they are. Oh, people put that up. Oh, just use 1500 PPM this. Two, what, uh, people post one fact all the time. But the reality is growing cannabis is as much an art as it is a science. It's as much feeling it as it is understanding it. That's why I try so hard to get you guys to understand that you need to back it off and make it easier. Because frankly, when we look at this guy's information that he puts up here, I mean, hey, 909, give me one sec. We know when I look at what this guy reads, soon as I get a grower that falls anywhere outside of the normal line, a caller that's now using powdered mag mag salt for epsom salt because he needs even more ppm listen soon as you go outside of the zone i already know you've misdiagnosed the problem i mean if he's in the zone where there's too much light you've misdiagnosed the problem by thinking adding more mag is going to solve the problem when truly what you have to do is back off the light so what i'm suggesting is that there are very few people that interpret these problems the way I do. That's why literally the first line, the second line in my book says females grow better because they're not beating the shit out of their plants. They just leave them the fuck alone. They're not discussing, should I water a 250 gallon pot every one day, every four days? Fuck, if you could get away with it, water it once a week. I mean, the longer you go between waterings, the better. Bah, 909, what can I do for you? Okay, my mic's on. Check, check. Hey, 909. 909. Oh, All right. 909 was probably one of those 98 
billion robocalls that guy <laughs> did through Florida with his neighbor. You guys watch it on the show. You hear my phone ring in the store and it doesn't forward to my cell phone. You know I blocked that number from them calling me. <clears throat> All right, 909's back. Maybe it's not a robocall. 909. Hello, robot. Yes, sir. Hey. Yeah, I just want to say I, I really don't want to hassle you with um with any more problems. I just want to tell you how much you just changed the revolution of the way I see. The way you what? Hello. Hey, yes. Yeah, I'm right here. Yeah, I just want to tell you thank you. Man, you turned on the light in my room for me. I was walking around with a tiny little flashlight before. Listen, I appreciate the compliments. my garden. You, you got me to think in new terms. Man, I feel like you're my grow god. I totally appreciate that. And, and you have to admit, I, listen, I got a couple calls. Thank you so much. Um, 642, hang on one sec. And that's why I tell you guys, I don't teach you how to grow. All I do is I teach you how to think about the equipment. That's why as soon as you fall outside the range of what's successful, I already know how this is going to turn out. As soon as I hear, listen, as, a, as I worked on an ambulance for a long time. So this is how I, I always tell you guys I think about it. If I go into your house as a paramedic and I say, hmm, as part of the call is my diagnosis. If I only say, hmm, once, I'll let it go. But if you make me say, damn, or you make me say, hmm, twice, oh, you're going to the hospital or you're signing my form that says I want to take you to the hospital. Because as soon as you fall outside the range, you're liable, right? Like if I left you there or that something goes wrong with the plant, soon as you fall out this very narrow range of success, this very narrow window of success, I already know there's gonna be a problem. That's why I tell you guys, you don't need to know how to grow. I'm not gonna teach you how to grow because even if it was me and I showed up, I would literally have to take notes three times. I would have to take notes three times in the journal. I mean, that's how, where do you think the journal came from? That's how you perfect a plant. You're not going to get it right the first time. You'd be lucky if you finished the first time. All right, listen, 642, how can I help you? Hey, Grow Boss, Kiwi again. I'm still wide awake. Hey, oh. um, I've got a couple of more tips for you. Everyone's pissing and moaning about the nutrients and burning and whatnot. Hey, um... I did that a lot right back at the start. I killed three crops. You did right. No one ever succeeds the first time. But you know what? I figured out what I did wrong. I never shook the bottles good enough. Never once did I shake them good enough. So what I do is I put marbles in them, in those one liter bottles, and I shake them to death until the marbles smash up all the nutrients that are sitting at the bottom. And I haven't had one problem since. Okay, listen. Let, let's be honest, you were using the nutrients correctly the whole time. And yes, some nutrients, I even mentioned that in the book, throw a marble in the bottom of some of these because you gotta rattle them like a paint can. Like some of these nutrients are super dense. In fact, um, hey, give, did you have another tip for me? What's another tip? Another tip. Now, we don't have any of those white microbes or anything like that over down here. But what I do do is I just put ha, ha, every hundred do liters. Do. <laughs> Sorry. <Paul. laughs> what I do do is that I put some molasses in my whole grow. Like every hundred liters of uh, uh, water, I just throw like a teaspoon of molasses, and it just I don't need to finish off with sulfate like you talk about, and it just gets all my, my enzymes. And another trick that I have, light is light that you you do talk about it. What I do is I buy 120 degree high bay lights and the cheapest chips LEDs. And I tell you, I hope I change the marijuana industry at the moment because I tell you, it's full of soaps and mirrors, my friend. Light is light, and I'm knocking it out of the park, as you say, with some shitty old LED high bay lights. Sweet, listen, I appreciate the call. Thank you so much. And you know, the Aussie's right. The New Zealand guy, are they? No, no. 
Aussies. Anyway, the down under guy's right. The New Zealand guy's right. I mean, here's, here's. I mean, you're watching me mix, yeah. mix a seven hey. three. You're on at the girl boss. Hey, how's it going? I just uh, have a little bit of advice to add as well. For a lot of people, I've noticed they had some flushing issues, and um, there's a speculation between how long they should go. Whether it's ten days, some people go up to twenty. So. Uh, basically, what I found on this uh, website, THC, uh, I think THCBiomed.com, uh, there's a new method of actually cutting the stalk and uh, putting it in a bucket and soaking it like a rosewood in a, in a, in a shop, in a flower shop. And um, basically, it gets time to cannibalize all of its nutrition that it's actually been uh, able to store up the entire time. Basically, it's cutting it from its root system, gives it uh, direct access to the water. So there's no issue between, you know, if somebody messed up, fucking it up during the time, like they, they mess up the root system so they won't be able to actually absorb the water properly. You know what I mean? So um, I just found that it's pretty interesting. And um, there's also a couple of different speculations, like adding different essential oils in or whatnot. I don't know if that's a great idea, but I just uh, found that that was a pretty interesting um, research find I just recently uh, found. Out. I think they just add that uh, this year. So, um, that's that's one of the little things I had to add. Another question I had though, um, about intensity of light with the uh, LEDs compared to the uh, HIDs. Um, I, I've I've had a lot of people who are you know pretty big in the game, been watching them, and they pretty much say that the intensity of light of the LEDs just isn't enough. Is there a particular light you would recommend that gives out a a, a really good intensity? I know that 2017 as the years go on, the uh, LED companies get better and better. What would be the uh, rec best recommendation? I guess I'll just uh, leave it there, and I'll just let you. Uh, no, no, let no, you, uh, no, wait, wait, no, 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 no. You come in and drop a couple bombs like that. Let's talk this out. Okay. Awesome. So, so what we're talking about here is intensity, and you were talking about LEDs, and you were saying that they're less or more intense. Yeah, I've been hearing that they're less intense, but in that case, you know, BCUs would be lower. So I would, I would, I would to the plants, you know, what I mean? giving them, giving them more um, of the spectrum that they need at less BTU. That's what I, I feel. But from some of the bigger guys in the game, they just they just say to, to just stick with the HIDs. And, uh, you know, especially if you're going bigger. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm you know I'm a little in between. I don't have a personal girl myself. I'm just in between a couple of people I know, and um, okay. I'm trying to get some people to go towards LED, but I just can't get the the proper information. I just need somebody like you to just clear that up for me. Okay, I have the proper information, but first. I want you to tell me about the best bud you ever remember smoking. What was the best bud you ever remember smoking? Oh, wow. Okay, that had to be a long time ago, and that would be probably Northern Lights and things like that, blueberries. I mean, just, just the older strains. I mean, 398s and things like that, I would say, are my favorites. But honestly, it depends on how good the, uh, the, the genetics of the person gets, if they get the right pheno and if they flush properly and things like that. I think anything can, can come out just amazing. It just matters what the person is doing, you know? Okay, so what you've defined is anything can come out amazing if the grower knows what they're doing, right? So Absolutely. So that, that right there is your definition. And I think that fits pretty close with what I say. And what you always hear me say is yield is based on light and quality on grower talent. And I say that because it doesn't matter what light you grow with. There is no bud that you've ever looked at and said, oh my God, this bud was grown indoors in hydro with advanced nutrients and an LED on a four by four table with a 50 gallon res. You've never looked at a bud and been able to determine anything about it other than basic quality. Oh, is it border weed? Is it, you know what I mean? The, the best bud that you described yeah was i mean in terms of you started this call with the technique about separating the roots and getting a better bud and all i'm suggesting is the best bud you ever smoked was 20 years ago if 20 fucking years ago the best bud you ever smoked it hasn't gotten any better dude since 1984 i had a bag of skunk weed in my pocket and my mom said you stink take a shower and i thought it was super funny and bud has not gotten any better since then now is bud better than You're border right. weed? There's Kush chronic swag, sure, what are we talking about here? But in their own class, once you get to that Kush level, there's just this grade of bud that you can't get any better. So my question is, you're going to get your choice of two ounces. One of them is, is 1984 bud grown just right. The other one was had too many nutrients in it and they, cut the stalk 
and they put the stock in their butt and then they wash wiped it and they did some stuff whatever it was you said that they did and now you've got two ounces of the bud one that was grown just right and one that somebody did stuff to to get the nutrients out of you see what i'm saying like they're both the same price which which ounce are you going to take all i'm saying is that you can do oh, whatever you I'm want to right you can do whatever you want to a fucked up plant to try to make it better but in no case is a fucked up plant that you try to make better no matter what your trick is whether you try to suck the poison out of it or you spray that cush smell and shit on it whatever it is the reality is you defined what good bud was and that was grower talent you see what i'm saying yes sir there is no fixing this yes. there is no there is no the the only way that that you do this is you have a 100 percent problem free garden why because it doesn't matter what week you fuck up in if you fuck up in week one in week 12 the plants are going to run to the light and burn and if you fuck up in week 12 you're going to burn the buds it just doesn't matter what week you fuck up in you have to have a 100 percent problem free garden for this to be great bud absolutely now, when we talk about a 100% problem-free garden, we're talking about a grower who uses the correct amount of nutrients. The correct amount of nutrients is the lowest amount of nutrients necessary to extract the maximum weight from any garden situation, maximum yield from any garden situation. So at that point, the grower would adjust his nutrients based on bucket size, how long they were in each size bucket, whether they just got transplanted or ending that session in that bucket, halfway through flower, start of veg, I mean, these are all the factors that go into it. I mean, growing is easy. You leave the plant the fuck alone. I make that joke all the time. But when you do interact with it, you have to interact properly. And you see the videos of the facilities. I mean, you see the videos of rows and rows and rows and rows and rows of these lights. And I'll tell you, we have the problem here in Vegas that facilities are struggling because they can't get good growers. And it's not that people don't grow Same well. in D.C. What? Same thing in D.C. We just legalize and the bud is just terrible. I could, it's so awful. I'll, I'll tell you what the problem is. I could walk into a facility and I could tell you anything about the plants. I have no idea about the equipment that they're using. Now, if I had the person who was like, oh, this is the res that supplies these plants that they're in this week. I would be like, oh, feed them this many nutrients. So... Then I would be like, oh, okay, is it veg? Then we know we're going to do more N than PK and more PK than N. But I wouldn't kill him. I wouldn't come in and try to hit the number exactly. I would come in low. And I'd just not kill him while I started to carefully take notes. Listen, I'm going to tell you that careful notes are worth more than any product I sell, any product I push, including my books. Not having any problems is worth more than anything else. Just a nice, smooth garden. Listen, there's no magic to this. It's a fucking plant. You don't need to know how to grow it. All you have to do is not kill it for 12 weeks. Sure. <laughs> Definitely, brother. All right. Does that answer your question? That. Absolutely. Okay, and now I'll let's just, talk uh, about... One now, more thing I heard. Sure. Go on. You know, go on. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, so I, I, wanted, I, can, I can wait. Okay, so I wanted to talk about the LED thing for you. Now, sure. you know those mag lights, like uh, those those six D cell battery mag lights. They're like this long. You know what I'm talking about? Like the cop lights, those old cop style lights. Remember? Yeah, the ones for. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I think we all remember. Um. Okay, those put out six batteries worth of light, right? I mean, they there's no low and high. You turned it on. It put out a lot of light, but you could adjust the, the, the head of it. <laughs> I shouldn't do that. You can adjust the head of it, right? You could, you could back the, you could back the reflector up and you would get a wider beam that didn't go as far, or you could advance the reflector. It would concentrate the light and the light would go further, but it wouldn't go as wide. Do you understand what I'm saying? Absolutely. Okay, Definitely. but it's the same amount of light in two different shapes. One is collimated. The other one is being dispersed. Y you understand the concept, right? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Let's just say that, it, that it, a 450 LED equals a 600 watt light. And 
usually I hold LEDs and um, hang on one sec. I'll get it for you. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay, four foot eight bulb. My observation is just really simple. You take an LED, that's 250 watts. Ha <laughs> I remember we've been talking about these in my store. Oh my God, I've sold so many of these little things in the last few weeks. People buy them just to supplement their thousand watt lights, which really is yeah. not a bad move. Because yeah, I heard it really some... brings the uh, resin production. Right. But you don't need much. So a small LED in a healthy garden is big, is a nice change. Okay, that's a four foot eight bulb. It's two feet wide, four feet long, it's eight square feet. If you take a 250 watt LED that says it puts out the same light as a 400 watt anything, then all we have to do is 400 watts divided by eight square feet, four by two, that's 50 watts per foot. If we take the same 400 watt LED, we have 400 watts Per square foot now I'm not here to argue with Lux guy or anybody about what the correct amount of light is but the reality is that the footprint of an LED is literally one-eighth the size of the whatever light it's replacing so all I'm suggesting wow. is two components is that in the police in those old cop flashlights those mag flashlights if you crank the lens hard over and it goes really far you get all the lights in a column that's this and if you crank it the other way you get all the lights really wide think about how far away you have to put an led for to it to be the correct amount of light because if you got 400 watts whatever that converts to lux lux man leaving you know what i mean super smart comments on my channel Whatever you think the right light is, if it's somewhere between 50 and 400, let's say it's 200 and we're both right, you would have to put this light really far away to get 200 watts if it's a 400 watt light. And the footprint, because the light is, this is eight square feet and this is one square feet because the light is so collimated, you can't, how do you spread it out over the same surface area? And you know, that's my observation always about LEDs is they are super intense. And listen, LEDs grow oh. great bud. I never say that LEDs don't grow great bud. All I say is the cost factor of an LED for you to spend 1500 bucks on, an, on like a pair of LEDs. Dude, the shit, that, the shit that people come to my store with and they're like, I've got literally like a thousand watt, like a 600 draw LED in a in a like literally those 36 by 36 tents i go dude a thousand watt lights a five by five space if you take a five by five space worth of light and stick it in a three by three tent it's going to be seven feet long but that's not how buds grow indoors indoor buds only grow about two feet long max outdoor buds grow you know what i mean outdoor buds grow like this so all i'm saying is is there's that relationship you see where i'm going with this absolutely okay so there's so less said, margin to a uh... Go no, no, go on. No, I was just saying, I mean, uh, with, with uh, the LEDs, it's just, yeah, the intensity of that, um, I, I guess I, I, I guess I was a little bit confused about the BTUs and the intensity of the light. Like you were saying, the intensity of light causes the mag to be, like, you know, pushed up to the top. And would that have to do with the BTUs? Because I know that light is heat. I've been following what you're saying that, you know, if the more light, the more heat you get. So that's the confusing thing with the LED because I know it doesn't seem to be burning when you when you put your hand under there. But what you're saying is is yeah, I understand like the intensity in the the actual area. It's pretty uh, it's pretty interesting. Okay, listen, I appreciate the call, and I'm going to share something because I just had a revelation. I was just listening to this guy, and I just had a revelation. Ha <laughs> ha! I just had the revelation, and this is why I tell you guys, Growing Dope's got nothing to do with what any of you think, and here's why. What's the, oh, you know what, I'm going to ask this person. Hey, 210, good morning. Hey, how's it going? 210, I have a question for you. 
Hello? Hey, 210. Hey, hey. um, you're, how's it going? Yeah, yeah, you're just talking about the uh, LED stuff. And, um, you know, um, start off with, with, with your books and, you know, uh, bought some uh, Mars Hydro lights. You know, uh, <laughs> the ones that you don't, you, don't, you don't care too much for. But No, 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 no. I, I just say, they're, uh, I just say LEDs are expensive. <laughs> it's all the same but LEDs are yeah. expensive. You know, uh, I, I bought mine on eBay for like around 500 bucks. I bought the two uh, 1600s. I put them on rails, put them super high, and uh, they, they love it. I you know. bet they do. So I bet they do. You put them on yeah, rails and put them super high. What's my biggest complaint about LEDs yeah. after the cost? They're too intense. What are the two things that you did? Yep. You put them far away and you move them. Good fucking job. Yep. Yep. So now my question yeah, thanks, is. Thanks. I mean, I have other problems, you know. No, no, but, that's I mean, fine. But either way, I mean, is, that, that, it would, I don't have the light problem anymore. Okay. And that was like one of my main problems because I thought I was having mag problems all the time. Okay, now let yeah. me ask. Okay, now let me ask you this. So you grew bud, you grew bud with LEDs. You didn't kill your shit when you were all done. Was it better bud than you've ever smoked before? Because it was under an LED. Um, no, I mean it's it's you okay. know I, what what I figured out is because I've had I've had different plants, um, you know, bigger and then others other smaller and under the same light, and it seemed like. The ones that were lower than the bigger plants seem to the buds seem to be even like smell sweeter, uh, smell just danker, you know, and, and even taste better. Like man, it was just amazing. It seemed like the lower the, the lower the further the, the the plant was from the light, it seemed to do better, you know. I'll tell so, you why that is. Okay. Because the heat the heat melts the scent glands first. The first thing you fry, mm -hmm. that's why I tell you when something gets hot, it smells like brown. Whatever brown is, the color yeah. brown, that's what it smells like because the scent glands are the first things that melt off. Now, let me ask you a question, okay? Let me ask you a question. The LED manufacturers, they make a couple of promises. They all make the same promises. One, they grow 20% better bud, 20% better than whatever. They all say that. Two, they all say they produce less heat. What is the third thing, sir, that they all claim to say? Um, I guess more weight. I they say. mimic. They they mimic, they mimic the sun. Our lights, oh, there you go. Yeah. Our lights more closely the yeah. mimic no, the sun. Right okay, right? Am I right? You hear them say that, right? Yeah, uh, Spectrum King also, uh, you know, frames also the same. So, okay. you know, I've been looking at them too. Okay, so the LED manufacturers, and this was the thought that I just had from the last caller. So I'm just going to ask you because I got you on the line now. So my question uh -huh. is, if all of the LED manufacturers and all of the HID manufacturers and all of the lighting manufacturers, they all talk about Spectrum. And they all say how they closely mimic the sun, right? Yeah. You do do no. I mean, like you know, don't just yes the grow boss. Tell me, you've yeah heard yeah. Me. I mean, no, you're you're right because okay. no, you're right because I you know through experience because I've had you know I have different you know I have different sets of LEDs. I have um, other you know just um, regular um, uh, the CFLs, and then I have other you know just low low uh, low wattage lights. Um, I have some T5s too that I utilize, and as long as the the plant is is a good distance away from the light, that fucking thing is gonna grow pretty pretty awesome. You know, <coughs> um, that's what I found. Um, it seems like playing with the light, if you know, it seems like playing with the light, uh, you know, to keep it in that range that you're saying that 90 percent or that 80 or 60 percent where they want the light where they're still stretching is to find that sweet spot. And once you find that sweet spot, then you could kind of, um, you know, move the light around to where you know which, which which plants like, you know, that certain level of light that you've been giving them, you know. So it's kind of like a, I guess, the, the talent that, you know, and you know your garden just because you're in there, you know. So. All right, listen, I'm going to ask you a question. All right, you ready? It's a tough fucking question. I'm, I'm dead serious. It's a tough fucking question. If all of the light manufacturers right. say 
that they more closely replicate the sun. Why is outdoor bud worth half of what indoor bud is? Okay, why is your bud more? I mean, I have no idea. I mean, uh, that's my point exactly. Does right, it listen. cost them more? What? <laughs> I don't know. It what? Yeah, maybe because it cost them more to grow. Okay. All right. I appreciate that. Hey, let me go to this caller. Hey, thanks for the call. Hey, 410, let me ask you a question. Sure. Okay. If all the light manufacturers say they produce the most reds and they most mimic the sun and they are, and, and you look at some of the LEDs, they have preset programs into their LEDs that mimic the sun's pattern throughout the day. Why is outdoor bud worth less than indoor bud? Yeah, I, you know, honestly, I don't even know. Because I've had outdoor bud that's better than some indoor bud. So I think it depends on grower talent with that one. And I'm, I'm literally, I, I think out of six years of doing, writing the book and everything else, I don't think anything has ever summed it up. If spectrum is so important and all of these vendors claim they mimic the sun and we're going to get this and more of this and more of that, why is, why is their light that mimics the sun indoors worth, why is their bud worth twice outdoors if, if you're trying to mimic it, outdoors is the best? I mean, they don't say better than, out, better than the sun. Our lights are better than the sun. I, I don't. So there you have it. That's probably, I would just like to point out that, that that's probably like the nail in the, you know what I mean? In the advertising coffin for the industry. If we were able to put a fine point on me telling you that all nutrients are the same and all lights are the same and all the medias are the same and all the cocos are the same and it's all up to the grower talent. I think the finest point is if all these indoor lights claim to be as good as outdoor sunlight, why is the outdoor bud worth half indoor? Anyway, what's your question, caller? What can I do for you? Hey, I just, I just wanted to say thanks, first of all, Grow Boss, because I'm actually finally like knocking it out of the park the way I'm supposed to, and I think it's because of you. <laughs> the only thing that I really am wondering now, I'm, I'm in like my final four weeks, you know, it's like everything's looking great, everything's fine, I'm just like, you know, kind of on the edge of my seat. But I'm like thinking that I might still have my light a little too close only because of lack of smell. It's like you were just talking about melting the scent glands. And I'd never really heard anybody talk about that. And I was wondering if you could elaborate on that more because I've got it like maybe two and a half feet away and it doesn't, the leaves aren't showing any signs of heat stress or anything. You know, I'm managing temperature really well. It's like in the mid to high 70s. So I just don't know if there's anything I'm really doing wrong, but I can't, it's like sometimes I smell them really a lot and sometimes they're just nothing. So it's kind of like, just wondering if you could elaborate on that a little bit. Okay. All right. I appreciate the call. Listen, this are some pictures. Follow along and I'll show you what I'm talking about. I mean, when you look at the surface of the leaf, you know how they talk about CBDs and all of these beneficials on the plant? Okay. There's all this stuff that grows on the plant. Here's a good picture. I mean, there are just like different kinds of hairs on a dog. There are different kinds of glands on a leaf. There's not only the stalk, there's the cap. And there's all these little things down here at the bottom, right? I mean, you see all the little things down there. So there is a lot going on on the leaf. What are we looking at here? Pistol at 40 days from seed. Okay, green, they should. Okay, so maybe in this picture, they're gonna tell us, they're gonna color code it for us. Let's just give a quick out shout out to Canaweed. Thanks so much. Okay. Oh, yes, they do tell us what it is. Son of a bitch tells us in French. Ah, uh, Canaweed. Gracias. <laughs> so, um, yeah, whatever. I learned Spanish in high school, not French. Okay. There's all this stuff on a leaf. And I want to point out why I always balk. <clears throat> 
why I always balk when you guys tell me about room temperature. There are many, many types of temperature, right? So there's many types of temperature underground, um, underwater, bulbous, cable stalked, Cecilia. Um, okay. All right. So anyway, so here's a uh, DH hydroponics. Hey, what can I do for you? Oh, yes, sir. I know who you are. Long drive. Yes, sir. Well, it's the pre-filter. You just wash it. But let me do this for you. Like, I'm in the middle of a webcast. So the store opens at 11. So let me do this. If you want to chat on the phone, because I know you're long drive. If you want to chat on the phone, call me back after 11 and we can talk. All right, later. Yeah, nobody in my store has a name. That's long drive. Yeah, I don't need to know people's names. So all I'm saying, okay, so we back here, we got this. All I'm saying is that when we look through it like this, um, there are, see all the different colors? They're different things. And when we talk about temperature, I just want you to understand that it's literally been above 110 every day outside in Las Vegas for weeks now. However, you could go outside, stand in front of the fan, mist yourself with water, and literally die of hypothermia from the heat being extracted by the vapor. So when you tell me the temperature of your room, that has very little to do with the, with the temperature of the leaf. Why? Because you can tell me that it's 110 degrees outside, but you can't put your hand on your car, but you can put your hand outside, but it's only 110 degrees outside. So why can't you touch your car? Because all light is heat and you can't see all light. We see a, a small part of the visible spectrum, right? So when we talk about, when we talk about the visible spectrum, we're right in like the 450 to 650 range. The starlight's like at the 750 range. Um, the 740 nanometer, like right in here, this is what triggers flowering in outdoor plants. That's the one that changes PF into PFR. And where you may only have a 10 hour night, you literally get like 12 hours of darkness because of how fast it converts the, so what we're talking about is people see a very small percentage of that. The predator sees all of it, right? That's why they covered themselves in mud. Oh, thank you, C. Fibris. They do deserve a hard cover. I appreciate that. I'm just not that smart, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put my book in a hardcover. Okay, I'm literally give the book away on the show, the information anyway. <clears throat> so, my observation is just that, it's just that if the whole thing here is about mimicking sunlight, why is outdoor weed worth, worth less than indoors? I mean, you can only hope to approach outdoors, right? That's why I'm telling you, it's all the same shit. And basically what you have to do, not kill the plant for 12 weeks and then harvest. Mm. Check this out. All right, give me one sec.
So, again, when we talk about temperature, the big thing that we talk about here is wet bulb versus dry bulb and the evaporation point of water. That's why you see the people with uh, things around their neck like a wet rag or those coolie things with a little diaper gel sewn inside. Because when you rotate it away from your skin, the water evaporates and takes the heat with it. There comes that point where the water doesn't evaporate and it doesn't work, right? So you turn it over and it makes your neck colder. So that's why you have to pay attention to the difference in, those, in, in that component. Now, you look at Deadliest Catch. I mean, these guys work on a crab boat. It's zero degrees on deck, 24 hours. They fall in the water and, and you fall in the water and you're dead in four minutes. Why are you dead in four minutes? Because the convection of the water, the conduction of the heat away from the body is much more efficient when it's wet, right? So we're talking about wet bulb and dry bulb. So you could just as easily put your plants, now people talk about the perfect humidity, but again, I'll tell you there is no perfect humidity and I can be sure of this. Why? Because um, I, I made that video for you guys, the, um, let's see, uh, summer plant heat video. Do I, oh, I'm not. So I made a video last year that goes over that goes over the heat required for your garden, right? So people are like, oh, <clears throat> perfect nutrient this or that, right? Okay, so this video. So what do I do in this video? I go over. So in this video, I go over the tricks to cooling your garden down for the summer. Why? Because in the summer it gets hot. So there are certain things you can do during the summer to uh, reduce the heat. Of course, you can do them all year long. But I'm just suggesting that I have this video about beating the heat. So let's talk about the difference in that. Because what do plants do? They sweat off their leaves, right? So they sweat off their leaves. Now, if you're in a high humidity environment, the plant can't sweat. The whole point of those Mondi humidity domes is to create a high humidity environment, right? The whole point of it is to create, why do you create a high humidity environment? So your clones don't sweat because your clones don't have roots. And if they sweat and they drop their water, they can't pick up any water and your clones will dehydrate and die. That's why you put a Mondi humidity dome on top of a root riot tray. When you use a little Clonex gel and take cuttings, you put them in the, okay. So leaves sweat, right? That H2O and the O2 that they release, that's part of their metabolic waste. If you back up their metabolic waste, it would be like trying to run and getting lactic acid built up in your muscles till you get a cramp. It's no different for the plant. If you back up their metabolic process, you stop the conversion of light into sugar. If you continue to give them light and you back up the process, like you stuff monkeys in the exhaust, I mean, you stuff bananas into the exhaust of a car, you just and you stop the exhaust you can't bring any air in that's why i tell you guys you you put one fan in and you blow another fan out what are you doing with two fans if you can't blow air out you're not sucking air in it all comes out to the same thing if you fill up an exhaust with bananas and you can't suck any more air in the engine where are you going to put it okay once you sort of get that idea um You understand that if the environment gets humid, if you were to take a fistful of leaves and you put them in a plastic bag and you tie the bag shut and you set the bag on your counter and you come back an hour later, that bag will be 15 degrees hotter than ambient. You can just put it right here on the table inside my store. You take a branch, strip all the leaves off, put it in a plastic Ziploc bag, seal it, throw it on the counter, and in an hour, you'll see that there's humidity all over it. You see Bear Grylls do it when he's surviving, right? They take the water out of the plant. So when there's 100% humidity, just like if a solution of liquid reaches 100% saturation with salt, you can stir it to make more, you can warm up the solution. The plant continues to generate energy until more water breaks free, until she can't generate enough heat to overcome the humidity trapped in the bag. 
So when you watch this video I make about summer, one of the things that I tell you is if the humidity is low and the temperature is warm, your plants are sweating. If you're deep into flower and you're not adequately circulating the air, it, the plants will sweat enough to give you bud rot. So what I'm suggesting is, is that if it's summertime and let's say your plants are 10 degrees warmer than usual, great, back the light up another two feet and they won't care. Now that the plants are physically cooler from absorbing all the wavelengths that you can't see, now that the plants are getting less light or dim it, see what I'm saying? Now that the plants are getting less light, they're getting less total heat. So those are the observations that if you don't blow the humidity off, the plant can't breathe out, the acids start to build up in the plant. Now, where we have lactic acid, H2O, if it breaks apart, you end up with H's, which is acid. It's bad for the plant. I mean, you guys are worried about putting calcium and dolomite lime to negate the, uh, the plant part, to, to negate the pH in the soil and a pH perfect everything. And the plant sits in too much humidity and you've created, it would be like you not breathing enough oxygen in. You get too much pH in your blood in the form of CO2, bicarb. That's what your kidneys use as a buffer in the vascular system. Plants have similar mechanisms. And then if the plant stays at the same spot and it's the same thing with the nutrients. So if the plant's drinking twice the water, you better cut your nutrients in half, right? Because if you give her twice the water and you don't cut your nutrients in half, you've effectively given her twice the nutrients. How come nobody ever talks about that? They all talk about the perfect PPM and nobody talks about the relationship of humidity and temperature. And yet literally, oh, you know what? I'll show you literally here. I'll show you. I'll show you exactly. Um, um, Oh, okay, because, because, uh, link to the, link to the, it wasn't a spreadsheet. What did I, I had a link to that, uh, the, those flashcards that I did, that I made for, um, we put it up on the, What is it? The f I had that website with the link where I showed you a 909. Hang on one sec for me. Um, images. <clears throat> okay. So all of these images, basically, they talk about this trade-off of the... Oh, here we go. Oh, check out that one. Okay, so plants are taking in CO2, right? They are releasing H2O. I showed you this in the other spreadsheet that I had where, uh, bah, 760, you're gonna have to hang on a sec. The other spreadsheet that I had were the difference between the top and the bottom of the leaf and the top and the bottom of the leaf and the relationship that the temperature played with CO2 and how if you have more temperature, you can get, you can use more CO2. 909, what can I do for you? 909, good morning. Seven six zero. good morning. Seven six zero. Check, check. Mike, check. Streaming. Any warning notes? Okay, so I just missed two calls. Okay, whatever. So I'm just saying that the relationship that CO2 plays with temperature, but listen, you, we may very well find out, and I can't put this fine of a point on it, but we may very find out that when you max Q, CO2 use, right? We have max light, max CO2. You know you always have water in the bucket. That's it. That's a no brainer. So when you max CO2, I mean, you run up a certain temperature, perhaps with max Q, um, 
the relationship remember now we got multiple things working on the leaf max q for co2 that temperature right there may be burn temperature for the uh for the uh scent glands on the leaf so i'm just suggesting that there's a relationship between all of these things and you could get the room so warm and you look at the plant and go oh shit the shit's going great right it gets hot starts drinking more water i i lower my nutrients the room's 88 degrees the plants look great i don't have any smell okay you might be running at 1500 ppm co2 your light might have to be backed off a little more but not having a smell the first thing so over the years like i tell you guys the story of how i generated my book the grow book and equipment guide right i always tell you guys the story that i had a bunch of problems growing too i got better didn't know why decade later bought a store questions came through the store started doing research couldn't find any answers I would like send a hundred customers home. They would all describe the same thing, purpling, because I wrote every question down. And like a couple of days, I knew all the questions were always the same. So I started researching those answers. And in this one book, Troubleshooting Plants, I found mag is the central molecule in the chlorophyll ion. Oh, no wonder the plants turn purple. And then I understood the water relationship in the roots after discussing it with hundreds of customers. And I would send like 100 customers home with nitrogen and they'd come back and that didn't fix the problem. And then I sent 100 customers home with mag after I read that one thing. And that seemed to fix the problem, except when there was too much light. So all I'm saying is that like the caller earlier, it's not just one thing that someone can say, oh, here's the perfect fucking light. Dude, if you have a 10 week veg, it's not the same thing as a two week veg or a one week scrog. Sea of green, I mean. It's not the same thing if you have this light versus that light. A headlight's a headlight. But those high intensity headlights, those Arctic blue and the purple ones and the yellow ones, those Arctic headlights are brighter than a regular headlight. They're both of them are headlight. You can point in the sky and say airplane, but a single engine props, not a four engine jet. I'm just saying that there's a relationship between these things. And everything that I try to show you guys about growing, like literally, Everything I try to tell you about growing is all you have to do is get it within the range because if you do too much light and this plant can't, I mean, if there's not enough stoma, substomal cavities to deal with the, and the chloroplast last here to deal with the conversion of light. I mean, if you look at that, dude, I'll show you something. If you look at that, I keep telling you. Um, I keep telling you that the plant is literally the exact opposite of a human. Okay. All right. Boom. Check this out. Oh, alveoli. Right? Mesophyll, the chloroplasts in the mesophyll. Alveoli. All a bunch of little circles like that. Chloroplasts, bunch of little circles. These are cells. These are made up of cells. In fact, if you look at this, this is actually, I was talking earlier about how, uh, how the, the, the red turns to blue and returns to the heart and how it stretches over the alveoli and the lung and exchanges its gas. That's the same shit that happens right here. The, 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 right? I mean, the plant makes glucose. That's why I tell you guys, it literally sucks heavy CO2 in, does its thing. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. Like, when you guys worry about the switching nutrients. I just want to be clear that switching nutrients can get you the same, can get you more, or can get you less, right? There's only one remaining solution that's better than where you are. One is the same, one is more, the other is less. So is switching nutrients worth it? Absolutely not. Add CO2, light water CO2 equals sugar and oxygen. Nowhere in the photosynthesis equation does CO2 exist. That's why I tell you guys, there are, you guys, when you guys ask about stuff like watering, like the first guy, a 250 gallon bucket is going to water at once versus every four versus every, right. 213, good morning. Hey, Grobo, Kiwi again. About to go milk the cows, so I better be quick. Hey, um, Everyone talks about um, light and veg and leaves and blah, blah, blah. But I'll tell you, what really is the good stuff is what's going on in the pot. And um, one of my tricks is, is to get the roots bigger 
is you just add more perlite to it. 50 50 mix while they're in veg. Make those roots hungry, go looking for the water, and then you transplant them in more cocoa on the second time before you go flower. Okay, listen, I appreciate that tip, and you are absolutely right. Um, I'm going to let, let me make this observation. I tell you guys that DWC is the fastest way to grow and that media is the slowest. And when we talk about media, I tell you if you have a bucket of soil and you're gonna water once a week, if you're in cocoa, you're gonna water once every five days. And if you add some perlite to soil, you'll water that every six days. And if you add some perlite to cocoa, you'll water every four days. And if you add more perlite to cocoa, you'll water every three days. And you'll, if you add more perlite, so now there's no cocoa, you'll water every two days. And now, if you get a bag of rocks of that hydroton, that lica, right? If you get, you'll water four times a day. Why the difference in watering? Based on the buffer surrounding the roots. So, you know what I mean? Like, if the more perlite you add to the mix, the less media there is to hold. So here is all media, and here is all perlite. All perlite, 100% perlite would be like growing hydro. You'd put a bucket on a four by t you know, table and you'd flood the table four times a day because perlite alone doesn't help, doesn't store water, right? Now, hydrotons, those pellets have all that surface area to store water and like capillary action, the roots pull the water off the surface area. The, you know, once you get three rocks deep, the humidity stays such that the roots are fine. But the more oxygen at the roots, the bushier the plants get, the more nodes per inch the plant can support. I mean, that's not me, you know what I mean? Like there's nothing, I'm not selling a product, I'm just telling you, the more roots, the more fruits. Why? Because the more roots you have, the bigger the plant. That's why I tell you, you can't veg with 24 hours of light because during the photo dark period, the plants take the sugars that she made during the day and transport them down to the roots for storage, long-term storage is starch. So she can grow the roots, feed the microbes, and next year she can send up a shoot so she can start growing again. That's why you can't beat this by doing 24 hours of light. Now you could, I suppose, if you just had a shitload of plants and you were doing a sea of green. You go right into flower, but even then, 24 hours of light doesn't work, 12 and 12. So all I'm suggesting is that you can't beat the system. All you can do is work, oh, it's very matrix. It's very red pill, blue pill of me. So, all I'm suggesting is that you have to live within the parameters of this, just like you can only run so far or exercise so much based on those parameters. And if you exceed the plant's ability to do this or to supply any portion of this, whether that be with mag or anything else, that's all the science you need to know. If you overcome the obstacle, if you, it, the diminishing returns, once you put too much in, there's, a, there's no more added benefit. Now, it may happen that the too much of CO2 overlaps with the temperature control of the scent gland on the leaf. Don't know. Don't care. You're going to have to experiment on that. That is, that is too scientific for me. Oh, and believe me, I had the botany. I had all of the classes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But even then, I mean, that information is so far away from what we're trying to do. Remember, mostly, like this show is me sitting here for two hours on a Sunday being funny-ish. And telling you guys how not to kill your plant making fun of it, all the other products and justifying that with some science. And it's not like, listen, I don't make my money off. I'm telling you guys use less. I make my money off selling the books and the information and the truth, right? Like I take the truth on tour. I make my money. I'm like the one dude in the girl's beauty contest, right? I get all the guy votes. All the girls have to divide them up. I'm the only one. Everyone else is like, they don't, nobody else does the hydro store thing nobody else just literally answers the questions nobody put it all into you know a book you know quantified it to give you an idea of how to think about it <laughs> there's only a couple things that go wrong my whole spiel is just teaching you 
how not to kill your shit for 12 weeks and then harvest. That's not bad. Things have changed very recently, though. I'll tell you, there's been a tipping point. So if you didn't catch yesterday's show, <coughs> this backdrop will be down today. I finished redoing the store. You can't really... Oh, you can see a little more from here. You can see there's more stuff, but I still got these like tents stuck right here. So this is the backdrop that I'm taking to the show. I've got shirts that I'm taking to the show. I mean, a couple other stuff. To go to, I'm going to a couple shows this year. Um, like literally, like I'm the only guy at the show. I mean, imagine the show, right? There's, imagine. Okay. There's always a cost to doing business, right? So I'll tell you guys just because you guys seem to think it's funny. But, uh, but, but I have to go to a show where I'm going to sell my truth, okay? And all of, the, all of the people at the show, I mean, who are the top vendors there? Not in terms of name brand, in terms of quantity. LEDs, nutrient companies. There will literally be... 50 nutrient companies of both. There will be a dozen 15 LED companies. My dumb ass in my one little booth. And, you know, I mean, I don't know nutrient sponsors on there, right? I mean, I do certain products and I've got some very loyal brands and they're all the biggest names in the industry. So when I show up, I show up with the best brands. Not all of the best brands, but all those brands are the best. And so I show up with my 10 by 10 booth and <laughs> they all know who I am. I have no idea who they are. It's like leaving me a mean comment on YouTube. Like, dude, you know me. I don't know you. You know what I mean? Like how much, how much am I really credit? Am I really going to give when the last thing you said was just buy a photo meter and that'll solve your problem. So. I need security. That's super funny. Dude, Bubba Medic. And listen, that hasn't escaped me. That thought hasn't escaped me. Listen, this is what I'm suggesting. <laughs> I read you that letter a couple weeks ago from that nutrient company. <laughs> We're 20% better. So my question is, like, if you put all the LED people on stage and you said, listen, you're all 20% better. I would like two questions answered. One, 20% better than what? And two, which one of you is the one that's 20% better than all the others? And then you would throw a bunch of swords in the room and you'd let them battle it out. I'm assuming you do the same thing with nutrients. <laughs> Except there'd be like 50 of them on stage. So think about in terms of the industry, there are 50 nutrient companies advertising. They spend millions of dollars a year on all sorts of social media platforms. And my dumb ass here is making all of the money on the opposite end, telling you they're all, it's all the same minerals. It's just different formulas of the same minerals. Just don't kill them with too much. Nutrients are based on light. How many plants, how old they are, what? I undo a lot of their advertising. I unwind a lot of the lighting myths. Because frankly, if all buds the same, what are you paying for? <laughs> Bubba Medic, oh, I just caught it, you're a medic. I'm easy on the six, code four. Yeah, dude, so funny. So, I'm just suggesting that when I go to the show and there's 250 booths, <laughs> 140 of them, don't like me. Ah. Oh, sure. I mean, there's 35,000 growers on the channel. And, you know, by the end of next week, all of these videos have 2,500 views and continue on from there. Oh, and sure, I'm right. I mean, I'm right. I don't, <laughs> I mean, I just show you guys, we can all pretty much quantify what I'm talking about. So yeah, I'm just suggesting that it's coming up on 11 o'clock. Customers probably going to come up. We don't do too much. Oh, I did B 
big business yesterday with two 75 year old females one who came in with a garden hat that was so pretty if she had took it off her head you could have filled it up with big outdoor buds like a cornucopia they were just absolutely so nice oh my goodness they bought so much digital equipment because they've been growing and having so much success they're upsizing and they bought the right equipment just want to say they bought the right equipment and just sell two old ladies the wrong equipment but i would like to point out they didn't quite know how to use it but then that's no different than a 19 year old that came in my store wouldn't know how to use it that's what i'm suggesting so super nice they came in a year ago got the books apparently they just drove back in because they're super sizing because they're making money and i thought to myself actually i said it out loud oh two atypical customers what can i do for you serious purchasing from these people like i'm excited to go to these shows just to see who the customers are because really the other vendors you can like me not like me uh, yeah, I don't have that embarrassment emotion where I, I don't, I don't really know you. And if you do social, if you do like, kind of like this, you sort of have to have that thick skin anyway. And so, you know, take your best shot at it. Scream at me. Won't be the first time. <laughs> so I'm just saying, I go to the shows, I do these things. I have to show up and there's going to be, and their spouses and their employees. It's going to be like 400 grow boss haters, right? I am super excited to go because love me or hate me, I'm right. That's all. And that's the reality of growing as I see it from behind the Hydra store counter. Um, okay. So I'm really not good at winding the shows up. I'm really not good at winding the shows down. They just sort of end abruptly and start at some point in the mornings. So my usual sponsors will be back last week. I totally appreciate your guys' opinions and emails and comments about the backdrop and going to the show. The stories are always funny about what goes on behind the scenes. Like when you're the pariah, when you're, like you're the anti-everything, when you go to take down the entrenched dogma, when you're the only one on your side, but you look at the phone calls that I get and you think about the way that I express stuff and in your head, you start, oh, you have forgotten more than they'll ever see. Uh, hey, Bubba I'll, Bubba, I'll send you, Bubba, send me an email and I'll send you a copy of my book. I wrote a book called uh, Vital Signs. Just the stories of me being paramedic, they're super funny. I mean, I'm as brutal a paramedic as I was like this. I mean, you called me, right? That's the whole point of this. You called me. So everybody get the fuck in my ambulance. Shut the fuck up and listen, because that's why you called me. <laughs> yeah, I got to tone that down on the show. But it is funny. Oh, dude, they'd be smoking with a drink in their hand. They'd be pulling on the slot machine. The security be standing next to him. I'd roll up gurney, oxygen, tanks, monitors, and I'd be like, hey, does somebody call for chest pain? <sighs> Pull the, I mean, no, 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 you hit the cash out button. No, no, put the drink down and your cigarette out. They literally put the drink in the, the cigarette in the drink, put the drink down. I'm like, you called me for chest pain. Get on the gurney. I just want to get checked out. Absolutely not. Get on the gurney. You called me into the middle of a casino. Get on the gurney. So, anyway, um, so that's, uh, that's what I get to face when I go to the shows. Um, oh, and the store owners, because you guys think it's super funny to go to the stores and tell them, oh, but the grow ball says pH lockout doesn't exist. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's the best one that I always hear about. Ah. Uh. Robots, you'd be so proud of me. I told my life, local Hydra store that pH lockout doesn't exist. Yeah. Yeah, I'd appreciate it if you never mentioned me to the Hydra stores. Um, oh, Chris, let me tell you. As as a dude, I would I would open up the door. 
I would open up the doors to the back of my ambulance and my fat ass would get out of the back and I'd just be like, here I am. <laughs> Somebody called 911. I mean, it would just be epic and tragic. And I would just be like, I mean, what are you going to do? Complain? I'm, I'm very, I was good at the job. I mean, it was the same shit as growing dope. Just avoid all the problems. Don't issue the wrong drugs. Identify the true nature of the emergency and treat that. You know, when we talk about identify the true nature of the emergency and treat that, I would just like to point out to everybody that the mag sulfur caller, he was not treating the true nature of the emergency, was he? He was treating a symptom and not the cause. And just like I tell you, the wrong equipment will screw your grow over. Treating the symptom instead of the cause. Oh, you've got a cough? Oh, right? Oh, you, you got a fever and they send you home and 24 hours later you got flesh-eating bacteria? Missing the cause for the symptoms is a big, big deal. It's a huge mistake to not get that level of, uh, two and oh, I'm done with the calls today. I'm going to get a customer. Missing a... Uh, Missing something like that and mistreating the symptom for the cause will fuck you over like mag sulfur. Does that rhyme? It almost rhymes. All I'm saying is one hmm, two hmms, or one damn, and we're transporting. So here's a guy who said, oh, one sulfur wasn't, cal mag wasn't enough. I found one with more mag, hmm. And then I went to mag, mag mag powder, hmm, hmm. Two hmms, and now you're two outside the trajectory for success. So I tell you, it's a trick I do. I just explain to you how to think about all the equipment, and I just help you guys track it. It's a book full of gardens. For smokers, cleaning your pipe and which pipes to buy, and fun stuff about smoking for the new smokers. Another one of those, and the all about nutrients and my no more grow more cards. Because I'll tell you, if you tell me age of the person and sex and what part of Las Vegas they're in, I bet you I can guess what's wrong with them with about an 85% accuracy. Why? Because it's always the same shit. I have a paramedic book that's just like this shit called Vital Signs. It's brutal. It's just the reality of the job from the way I see things from doing the job. Like, listen, you can't smoke for 50 years and then wonder why we're in this situation. You know what I mean? So I'm just saying, I've got all this fun stuff in the grow book. You can buy the $69 kit along with all about nutrients. And of course, the less you do, the more you get. You really should be able to interact with your plants about once a week, unless you have a lot of plants. And if there's anything else I can do for you, you can always hit up my website, thegrowboss.com and if you have my books look you can buy a vendor shirt right look at all this cool stuff we got and of course we have i sell a mega meter we got a calibration video just a straight calibration video coming up and the ultimate ro and if you have direct questions that you wanted during the week or off the show you can always sign up for the one hour consult and we have a kit that's included with the one hour consult anyway i'm the grow boss As always, as always, I appreciate you guys watching. It's super funny. However I come across, listen, I play a bad guy on TV, YouTube. I play a bad guy on YouTube. Well, no, not really. This is, this is me. I'm not any smarter than this. So, listen, I appreciate all you guys watching. I mean, we get calls from New Zealand. They're up all night. Yeah, I appreciate your calls and your tips. Cutting the leaves, it's so smart. Removing the individual fingers. I mean, dude, Bubba Medic, you're super funny. Great Nate, right? I mean, New York John, I mean, you're helping me out. Oh, no deals this week. No, I did have deals, damn it. I got, thanks so much, I forgot. If you guys wanted to see that shit, oh, listen. I got four of these and four brand new super size hoods. I bought them. $35 each ballast. They're new in the box. They don't, you don't get a warranty, but from me 30 days, they're new in a box, right? I mean, they're expensive ballast. I'm selling them for, I think it was like a hundred bucks. 
So I got them super cheap, but I had to buy a bunch of stuff to get them at that cheap. All right, but that's Nanolux. They're fantastic. Listen, this is Solastex, dimmable, 600 watt. I got four of these. I think I got them for 20 bucks each, but you're still going to give me 90 bucks if you buy more than one or 100 for just one, and I'm probably going to work it into a hood deal. I've got a bunch of 600 watt Hordelux used bulbs. Some of them are barely used. I got those used Hordelux bulbs. If you remind me about this video for the next week, I've got used Hordelux bulbs, 600 watt or 1,000 watt. Dude, you can have them for like 30 bucks. I get bulbs. Okay. I get bulbs when they do the storage because of the way I advertise that I buy it used. I get bulbs. They buy storage bins. Did I get bulbs, no boxes, like stuff, ballasts, all in boxes. Hoods, all in boxes. Bulbs, screwed into the hoods. In the boxes. How? Why did they do that? So... I get all sorts of stuff. People bring me all sorts of stuff from their garage, boxes of bulbs. So anyway, so I've got super good deals on used bulbs. The ballasts, dude, those are a couple of name brown ballasts. Solastex, Nanolux, those are pretty good. All right, so just in terms of the show, so you know what to look forward to in terms of this show. Um, all this stuff for the trade show gets packed up this week and gets shipped off to Portland. So I'll do my Portland show, and then I'll ship it back here, but I won't set it up again. But in terms of finishing up the store, when this show ends today, I'm going to take this down. I'm going to put these tents, these tents um, that you see flopping right over here, back behind me. We're going to finish up the store. Next week when you see the show, I don't know how I'm going to do it in my store because, frankly... I got so much shelving in my store at this point, I am entirely full, and I've got my soil island, I've got, we switched to, uh, and you'll see in the video that I made for the redo of the store, Project Grow Store, because I can't do Project Grow House yet, but I have not forgotten. I mean, I got grid wall everywhere. We got so much stuff. Oh my God, the store is so packed. It looks good. I'm super excited to show you guys about the store next week, but I don't know what I'm gonna do for a backdrop because I don't am I just gonna hang something like this am I gonna put the shelves back I'm excited to see <clears throat> okay so let me tell you guys this be, uh, um, Barnes is back fuck listen I did three hours this week and I still didn't get to Barnes is back I've got such good Barnes is back pictures I keep telling you it's the same thing, and I don't even have a cup to put my water in so you guys don't get the crinkle. Like, I literally finished my as much as I could possibly plop my ass in front of this camera, <laughs> started the show. The show's going to end. I'm going to end up at selling stuff to customers. But it all comes together this week. I take this backdrop down. We send it off to the show. When it comes back... It's super easy to send off to the MJ BizCon next, later in the year. I'll get my store back. We'll finish up a few details of the shelving. I'm excited to show you, like, next week with a walk-around tour of what the store looks like. So. Um, um, in terms of uh, a Wednesday show, you guys tell me. Because... Soon as I get the backdrop and this shit settled, I, I could do a show every evening. I mean, it really isn't a thing. So if you guys don't like weekends, listen, I can do weekends and another day during the week. We could do evenings. I have to work the store on the weekend. I have to work the store on the weekend. Yeah, right? Like I am <laughs> I am on the front lines. Like I am I am at the store on the I work the store on the weekends. Chuck totally takes care of it for me. Everything set up the soil. Like, you know, we got that soil island way up front. But I'll tell you, literally, like, Chuck drove away Friday at, you know, an hour before we closed because I cover for him. I sold 24 bags of soil from out back in the soil island in 15 minutes after he left. Crazy. Um, ah. Uh. Ah, oh, dude. 
so so many medic stories oh yeah you didn't want to end up in my ambulance if you were drunk or a problem I'd just knock you out with some Benadryl and turn you throw your wallet out the window and turn you into the hospital oh yeah I was on the strip oh yeah all right on that note maybe I can censor that last part out before uh, the show ends all right I've got someone at the front door I can hear the I heard the handle squeak so listen the book is called vital signs um maybe i'll show it to you next week anyway so uh all right i appreciate you guys so much thanks for watching from everywhere um yeah there you go